this is the news and here is the latest updated with me, Vanessa. Timor-Leste and China agree to strengthen regional cooperation and safeguard multilateralism. President of Timor-Leste, José Ramos Horta, and visiting Chinese State Councilor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi expresses common willingness to strengthen regional cooperation and safeguard multilateralism. During their meeting in Dili, the capital of Timor-Leste, Ramos Horta says China and Timor-Leste have a long-lasting friendship and China's development benefits Timor-Leste greatly, which is of great significance to the region and to the world. Ramos Horta thanks the Chinese government and people for their tremendous support in the past years, saying he is full of confidence and expectation for the future of bilateral relations. Which has been going on for 20 years, uh, very appreciative of Chinese support in uh, many areas of uh, uh, the, in this bilateral cooperation, in education, in health. We have uh, many Timorese students uh, studying, uh, who have studied, studying in China, including in medicine. Wang Yi and Timor-Leste President José Ramos Horta also signed an agreement to help meet some of the country's most pressing needs. Wang Yi signed several bilateral agreements with a host of individual countries focused on economic, health and humanitarian issues. Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi visits East Timor to sign bilateral agreements. During the meeting, Wang Hall talks with Timorese Prime Minister Taun Watan Ruak and Foreign Minister Adelziza Xavier Magno and witnesses the signing of agreements. In this visit, he also meets newly elected President José Ramos Horta. East Timor and its 1.3 million people are highly dependent on revenues from its oils and gas reserves and the country has been grappling with diversifying its economy and reducing high rates of poverty. Ramos Horta pledged in his inauguration on May 20 for stronger bilateral ties with China, particularly in the agriculture and sustainable energy sectors, among others. China was unable to gain consensus from the 10 Pacific Island nations for a sweeping regional pact on security and trade at a meeting after several nations said it was too rushed and they wanted to consult the broader region. Australia Prime Minister pledges to strengthen trade and investment ties with Indonesia. Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese heralded and deepened relationship with Indonesia, pledging stronger cooperation on trade, security and climate change during a meeting with President Joko Widodo. Foreign Minister Penny Wong and Trade Minister Don Farrell on the visit Australia's newly elected Prime Minister stresses the importance of engaging with Southeast Asia's largest economy. Albanese says the government will work together to realize the potential of the Indonesia-Australia Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement and also offers technical expertise for the development of Indonesia's new plant, New Green and high-tech capital, Nusantara. Albanese also reiterated a 470 million Australian dollar pledge for overseas development in Indonesia and Southeast Asia, a 200 million Australian dollar climate partnership, and the creation of a new Southeast Asia office in Australia's Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. Australia and Indonesia meet to talk about investment and climate change. Australian Prime Minister Anthony Albanese in Indonesia to meet its President Joko Widodo and shore up relations between the two neighbours in his first bilateral visit since being elected last month. Prior to Monday's official talks, which are expected to span trade investment, climate and regional security, the two leaders rode bamboo bicycles around the State Palace in Bogor. In welcoming remarks, President Jokowi, as the Indonesian leader is commonly known, emphasized the importance of the two nations strengthening their bilateral commitments amid current global challenges in a dynamic and challenging world.
The trip comes as Australia's new Labour government, which ended almost a decade of conservative rule in a May 21 election, puts greater focus on relations with Southeast Asia and climate change, an issue crucial to its Pacific neighbours, as it navigates ties with a more assertive China. China says Australian military plan in South Chinese Sea threatens sovereignty. China says its military has identified Australian military aircraft and warned them to leave after Australia said fighter aircraft intercepted one of its military surveillance planes in the South China Sea. Chinese Foreign Minister spokesperson Zhao Lijian at a regular news conference in Beijing says the Australian military aircraft seriously threatened Chinese sovereignty and security, and the countermeasures taken by the Chinese military were reasonable and lawful. Meanwhile, Australia's Defense Department says a Chinese fighter aircraft dangerously intercepted an Australian military surveillance plane in the South China Sea region in Ma. Villagers in Thailand help Dogon back into the ocean. Villagers in southern Thailand help release a stranded dugong back into the ocean after it beached itself, a video published on social media showed. The stranded dugong, which is an endangered mammal, also known as a sea cow, had several deep scratches and cuts on its body, which were bleeding. The Trang province villagers, who found the dugong on the beach, poured seawater on it to keep it cool and placed it on the tarpaulin to help maneuver it to help it into the Andaman Sea and swimming alongside it for a few moments. Villagers on the beach laughed as they saw the rare mammal swim away. One of the villagers involved in the rescue says he found another stranded dugong earlier this year, so he was happy to be able to save this animal. <laughs> Chinese urges Australia to stop engaging in provocation against China. Spokesman Zhao Lijiang makes the remarks in response to the latest statement by the Australian Department of Defense, which says an Australian warplane was intercepted by a Chinese military aircraft on May while conducted the reconnaissance mission in airspace over the South China Sea. The spokesman also says a sound and steady China-Australian relationship serves the fundamental interest and meets the common desire of the two peoples. Zhao says China's position on its relations with Australia is consistent and clear. The Australian side needs to manage the bilateral relations in the spirit of mutual respect and mutual benefit and bring China-Australia relations back onto the right track of sound and steady progress. China and Papua New Guinea expresses their willingness to deepen bilateral relations and expand pragmatic cooperation. Papua New Guinea Prime Minister James Marape meets Chinese State Councillor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi to deepen bilateral relations and expand pragmatic cooperation. At the meeting, Marape says his country thinks highly of China for making remarkable achievements in its development and improving its people's livelihood. And the Papua New Guinea fully agrees that developing countries also have legitimate right to develop. He adds that Papua New Guinea has learned from China in the establishment of special economic zones, which has yielded positive results. His country will continue to deepen bilateral pragmatic cooperation with China, expedite a free trade agreement with the country, and provide convenience to Chinese investment in the Papua New Guinea. Meanwhile, Wong says the Chinese side appreciates the Papua New Guinea for fully understanding and staunchly supporting China in safeguarding its core interest. He affirms China is willing to share development opportunities with the Papua New Guinea and welcome to export of more quality PNG products to the Chinese market. Wong encouraged more youths from the two countries to contribute to bilateral relations and friendship and pass on their friendship from generation to generation. The PNG is the seventh leg of Wong's current tour to Pacific Island countries, starting from May 26, with Timor-Leste as the last stop before arriving in Port Moresby. He visited the Solomon Islands, Kiribati, Samoa, Fiji, Tonga, and Vanuatu. Japan welcomes back foreign tourists in tour packages today.
Prime Minister Fumio Kishida says starts today Japan again accept foreign tourists in tour packages while speaking at the symposium attended by leaders of other countries including Singapore and Thailand. From June 10th, we will resume accepting foreign tourists on package tours with tour guides. In addition to that, we will provide for international flights to resume services at New Chitose Airport and Naha Airport by the end of June. Kishida also announces Japan will double maximum daily entries at border crossings to 20,000 from June as part of the phased easing of COVID-19 curbs. He also says Japan will also prepare for international flights to resume services at Shinchitose Airport in Northern Tourism Prefecture of Hokkaido and Naha Airport in the southernmost Okinawa Prefecture by the end of June. In addition, government sources say the 20,000 daily limits will include returning citizens and residents as well as visa holders and visitors on packaged tours. Travelers from lower-risk countries who are fully vaccinated and boosted are exempt from quarantine and COVID-19 testing upon arrival. Japan has been practically closed off to tourists for more than two years. Thailand's LGBTQ community celebrate the month of pride by waving the rainbow flag and the official pride parade. Thousands of members of Thailand's LGBTQ plus community raised rainbow flags in the country's first official pride parade to celebrate Pride Month and support gender equality. They also wave in blue, pink and white transgender flags. Marchers make their way through the main streets of Bangkok. Some chant and call for same-sex marriages to be legalized and for sex workers' rights. Designer Chaparana24, who made his costume with a long rainbow flag, says the parade giving him goosebumps. The relatively big parade was supported by the local government for the first time. In Thailand, two bills on LGBTQ plus couples, including one on civil partnerships, are waiting to go to Parliament. The civil partnership bill approved by the cabinet in 2020 would recognize same-sex unions with almost the same legal rights as married couples. And that's the whole news for today. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a lovely weekend. Bye for now. <laughs>